Hi guys, welcome back to D's Show and Tell. So cloud gaming has been pretty popular everywhere except here in Australia. That changed not too long ago with Nvidia's partnership with Pentanet to launch GeForce Now here in Australia. Finally. Today I'm going to test it out, let you know what I think and let you know whether it's worth the price. So let's get into it. For those that don't know what GeForce Now is or what a cloud-based game streaming service is, think of it like this. Nvidia owns a bunch of computers at a remote location and allows you to connect to these computers to utilize its compute and graphical power, allowing you to play the game on your PC provided your internet connection meets their minimum requirements. 25 megabits per second for 1080p 60 frames per second gaming and 50 megabits per second for 720p 60 frames per second gaming. Because the game is being streamed and not utilizing your PC hardware, you can play AAA game titles on literally a potato of a PC. GeForce Now can be pretty much run on any device. I'll test it out on PC, Android and iPhone today. Some key things to note about GeForce Now, unless it's a free to play game, generally speaking, you will need to own the games you play via linking your Steam and Epic Game Libraries. There are some game publishers that have pulled their games from GeForce Now due to commercial disputes. 2K games, which include Borderlands, Civilization, Bioshock, won't be found. Rockstar games such as GTA and Red Dead Redemption, and neither will Blizzard and Activision games like Call of Duty, Warcraft, Overwatch, and Diablo. There is a free subscription service with limited access, which you will be able to test this service and have a look at the game library before committing to a paid sub. But unlike GeForce Now, subbing to my channel is always free, so make sure you like and subscribe for all the latest reviews on tech. So the basic or free sub has a queuing system and a one hour play session, which allows you to re-queue straight after your play session, which is great. It does lack RTX features of Nvidia graphics cards, keep in mind. The priority sub, which gives you priority access as the name suggests, and four hour play sessions. And of course you have the RTX technologies enabled for those sexy graphics on compatible games. Founders pricing for the priority sub is $19.99 per month or if you buy a whole year up front you save $2 per month or $24 for the year. That is a guaranteed price for the lifetime of your subscription if you sign up now, however they don't mention how long this pricing will last. So to sign up you just head over to cloud.gg. I've downloaded the program and app on PC as well as on Android, I'll test on the iPhone using Safari. I'm going to run it on the worst PC in my house which is relatively modern still but it only has Intel HD graphics. It is a Lenovo Yoga S730 which runs an Intel i5-8250U chip with 8GB of RAM. Wait times right now aren't too bad on the free service. At around 4pm on a Monday there were 100 people in line, it took me about 15 minutes to get into a game. I've tested a few different titles but I think the most important for this service are going to be the first person shooters and more competitive style games where delay and smoothness are going to be paramount. Firstly, CSGO 1080p 60 frames per second. World War Z now. And here's Dota. So first things first, it's definitely not as smooth as playing using my main PC, which is most likely driven by two reasons. Firstly, being limited to 60 frames per second, I generally play at well over 100 frames per second. And the other likely reason is due to my connection, which probably explains some of the lag spikes I experienced. My speed test ping is in the low 30s, which is fine, but not the best. And my packet loss when doing a network connection can be 5% at times. And depending on network conditions, download speeds can get as low as the 20 megabits per second range. But let me be clear, it's definitely more than playable. Graphics quality, definitely not as sexy as running games natively using your graphics card, but remember this is streaming the game. Now delay with shooting a gun felt quite minimal to me. For hyper competitive games like CSGO, I think it is fine to play casually like I normally do. Deathmatch or Arms Wraith will get you by just fine. As you can guess, probably not suitable for competitive or ranked play if you take the game seriously. All other games I tested, I had a great time. Your network connection does get tested every time you try to run a game, which tends to fail for me most of the time. So if you've got a pretty good connection, you might actually have a smoother experience than me. 
Another thing to note is, unfortunately, a lot of games that I play aren't available. So Call of Duty, Borderlands 3, Monster Hunter, and I only play games on my main desktop, so I probably won't need to use this service moving forward. But I think there is definitely people out there that could see value in this service. Gaming PCs are damn expensive, not to mention they tend to be big. Perhaps you don't have the disposable income to buy a gaming PC in the current market, or you just don't have space to put it. You could literally be up and running in a AAA title in minutes on your current laptop. You just need to buy the games first, of course. I think wait times are also tolerable for the free sub, particularly during non-peak times. I fired up a game at 10.30 just to check the wait. There was four people in queue, so that's pretty good. So if you play your games mostly outside of peak times, this could be great. For everybody else, provided GeForce Now has the games you currently play or want to play, I think the subscription price is fair, but not excellent. At most, it'll cost you $240 AUD per year. I think it's fair to say a lot of the games on there right now would require a PC that would cost at least $1,500 at today's prices. That's like six years worth of sub, even without the annual plan discount. And yes, I know a PC will have resale value, but this isn't for the people with the money or the space. This is maybe for the uni student, the low income earners, the nomads that are constantly moving around. But remember, the price is to increase after the founder pricing expires. For me, I would consider primarily using GeForce Now if it could get more publishers on board. And if I had plans to downsize my current setup from a rig on my desk to perhaps a silent build mini PC that I could vase amount away from site for that clean minimalist look. But for everybody else, I've left the link in the description section if you want to test it out. Remember, there is a free subscription system for you to use, so it's definitely worth a look and test. And if you do like it, I guess sign up for a paid subscription. You can cancel at any time anyway, so there's no harm in it. Anyway, that's all for this video. It is shorter than usual, but I thought I'll just share something that's a little bit different to just headphones and phones. New videos every week or two. See you in the next show and tell. Bye-bye.